All right, welcome everyone. I think I think we'll go ahead and uh, get started. It looks like everyone's had enough time to uh, get logged in and get situated. So uh, thank you again for joining me this afternoon. Uh, my name is Misty Hobrach, and I am a marketing manager here at ReachForce. Uh, ReachForce is a marketing data management company focused on helping B2B marketers deliver growth through our data quality solutions. So although our focus is not personalization, uh, data quality management is, and you cannot personalize content without that quality data piece. Um, again, I want to thank everyone for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us on today's webinar. All right, so let me move on over to our agenda here. There it is. All right, so today we're going to discuss one of the widely topics um, in the marketing realm right now, inbound personalization, web personalization, and how, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, how data enrichment and quality data help fuel an inbound personalization effort. Um, we will discuss how quality data uh, fuels those personalization efforts, um, web form best practices to help accelerate conversions, um, along with the benefits of capturing high value lead data at the point of entry in real time. So just a few housekeeping items before we jump in and get going. Uh, everyone will be in listen only mode throughout the webinar. I encourage uh, everyone to type in your questions as they come up throughout the webinar and submit. At the end, we will have time for a brief Q&A session. And if your question is not answered during the webinar, we will definitely follow up with you after the webcast. All right, so inbound personalization. So inbound personalization is a marketing strategy that focuses on delivering personalized messaging to your prospects and customers. So how does it work? So inbound personalization, it analyzes historical data, um, analytics, and along with customer behavior, therefore allowing you to deliver optimal messaging um, at the appropriate time and engage with customers or prospects on a deeper level. So having that ability to deliver valuable content that's going to resonate with the customer or prospect is really proving to be extremely effective with increasing lead conversions and better pipeline forecasting um, as well. So in our day-to-day, -day, we all use personalization, right? So for example, if you were hosting an event in the Seattle area and wanted to only target CMOs, having the ability to send an email based on a prospect's or a customer's location, uh, title, and to be able to address them by their first name, for example, can really help you connect with them and create more of that personal connection. Um, a critical part of this is making sure that your data in your database is clean, and verified on an ongoing basis. So without that verified data, you're going to be at risk um, for using an incorrect name in an email, for example, and inviting possibly prospects to events that, you know, perhaps live nowhere in that, in that area any longer. So considering that 82% of the people that come to your website are not potential customers, you really have to do more than just get them to your site. So in recent years, the amount of data that is now available really allows marketers to drill down and deliver optimal messaging to prospects and customers that they can really relate to, something that's going to be meaningful, them, meaningful to them and really trigger an emotional response. Um, as I mentioned, marketers have access to so much information and therefore better insight into what their customers do because of all of this available data that is readily available. Um, so another example here is Let's say your company is targeting 50 key accounts, right? Um, you can build in ad campaigns designed to engage those named accounts and also target those companies with custom content and ads across multiple channels at multiple times. So although it's going to take a little more time on the front end to set up your personalization initiatives, uh, the results far outweigh producing content that is just going to be targeted to that wider, audi wide, wider audience. 
So why inbound personalization? So I've already given some pretty good reasons why. Um, but this is an interesting t statistic here. Um, according to um, Seismic and Demand Metrics Survey, 80% of the respondents said that business objectives were better met with personalized content. So by using inbound personalization, it really enables you con to connect with your prospects and customers, um, allowing you to create an immediate emotional response with your customers and prospects, like as I mentioned, by delivering that personalized messaging that's going to really resonate with them. Um, being able, for example, to deliver content on your website uh, based on title, industry, or even company size is much more meaningful uh, to your customers or prospects. Um, the messaging, let's say, that's going to be displayed to a, CSO, a CMO, for example, um, should be at a much higher level, more strategic around uh, marketing strategies and current marketing trends, not primarily focused on the day-to-day -day pains, let's say, that um, for example, a marketing manager might experience with the data that's collected um, on their landing page, form fills, et cetera. Um, also, a prospect, let's say, who attends a webinar, um, for example, or downloads a case study is, is going to be farther along in the buying process than someone who reads a blog or watches a video. So you want to show them relevant content that's going to be based um, on their place in the customer life cycle. So as I mentioned earlier, the amount of data that is now available, now available, well not only is there a massive amount of data available, there are all, uh, now also tools available that use all of that data and allow you to effectively deliver that personalized messaging that I've been re uh, referring to, to your prospects and customers, which will then help drive your personalization efforts. So having those right tools in place um, is essential. Uh, both Marketo and HubSpot offer personalization tools. Um, Marketo has what they call their real-time personalization tool, and it helps drive your personaliz personalization initiatives by presenting messaging to your prospects and customers, which, in, 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 excuse me, in turn allows you to convert those prospects you don't know, um, engage those that you do already know, um, like we've discussed by delivering relevant content, and then also target your key account. So um, it's going to also allow you to nurture customers over time uh, based on what you already know about them, um, who they are, where they work, and how they uh, behave across the web and other channels as well. Um, HubSpot's personalization tool um, allows you to deliver um, optimized personal personal messaging to your customers and prospects by presenting messaging to your prospects and customers. Uh, their personalization tool has smart content and it would allows for that built-in personalization so you can show the most relevant messaging uh, to each of your visitors at the appropriate time. Um, HubSpot looked at the data for more than 93,000 uh, calls to action created using HubSpot over a 12-month period. Um, what they found that the calls to action targeted to the specific user performed 42% better than the calls to action that were generic. That's incredible. Um, both of these tools, um, Marketo and HubSpot, their personalization tools, allow you to present that personalized messaging at the right time and allow you the, the ability to target who sees what. All right, let's move on over to our next slide. So quality data and web personalization. Um, so as I mentioned in the beginning, you can't personalize content without quality data. Um, the data that is collected on landing pages and form fills is extremely important for personalization efforts. Um, if you are receiving unreliable data, it will be nearly impossible to effectively deliver personalized content to your customers or prospects. Um, our SmartForms product has the ability to collect all of a prospect's um, firmographic and demographic information on the first form fill, which then enables marketers to deliver more optimized messaging 
on subsequent visits to the website. So if the data you're collecting is not verified quality data, you're going to be unable to deliver optimal messaging to your customers or prospects uh, through email or on your website, right? Uh, kind of like the old saying, garbage in equals garbage out. Um, so inbound personalization really relies on quality data as a power source. And without quality data, there's just no way to have inbound personalization and deliver quality relevant messaging. So just like your car that is fueled with gasoline, for example, let's say inbound personalization is fueled by quality data. Um, in fact, according to seismic and demand uh, metric report, of the respondents not currently personalizing content, 53% noted a lack of data as being their primary obstacle. Um, so as you can see, the importance of having quality data goes hand in hand with personalization efforts. All right, so poor database quality. So by poor database quality, um, I'm referring to either having, you know, old or bad email addresses, incomplete or missing data, duplicate records, among other factors, right, that make it almost impossible to reach your target account successfully. Um, poor database quality is one of the biggest obstacles we marketers face in order to effectively reach prospects. Um, in fact, according to Marketing Sherpa, 50%, uh, which is half, of all email addresses go bad every 12 months. And only 21% of prospects provide accurate phone numbers through form fills. I have to admit, I'm guilty of that sometimes myself, right? Sometimes we don't want a salesperson calling us. Um, so as you can see, these are great metrics around um, data quality and data health also. So the benefits of capturing high value lead data at the point of entry in real time. So as you can see, the importance of capturing that high value lead data at the point of entry in real time is critical for inbound personalization. Um, without accurate data, as I mentioned, there's no way to provide relevant messaging to your customers or prospects. Um, and with that, there often, often comes that painful gap between having to keep your registration form short so your conversion rates still stay high um, while, still have, while still capturing all that rich data that's needed um, for personalization. Uh, the need to append and enrich data in real time is crucial for successful personalization. Um, making sure account data is accurate and organized is an absolute must for uh, multiple reasons, right, for lead scoring, for routing, and nurturing as well. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how smart forms can help to combat that incomplete data from your leads by importing clean and validated and standardized data at the point of entry in real time. So how does it work? So smart forms uh, sits on top of any existing form in a marketing automation platform or other lead form software. Uh, so here you can see I'm showing an example of an existing customer's are uh, excuse me an existing customer of ours, Hortonworks, using smart forms on their contact us page. Um, here you can see where I've um, entered um, our marketing leader's information on the form. Uh, smart forms will then work in real time. Uh, behind the scenes to gather all of that rich firmographic and demographic information that's needed for your personalization efforts. So after hitting submit, uh, this is what you see, this little pop-up. Um, so SmartForms is now requesting that I verify which company I'm referring to. You can see it gives uh, three options here and then also the option of none, uh, none of the above. Um, so even if I choose none of the above, um, Smart Forms is going to choose for me based on my referring IP, et cetera. Um, so once a prospect submits their information, Smart Forms appends all the company lead data in real time and sends it to your marketing automa uh, automation platform um, or CRM, right, depending on how you set, have that set up in your organization. 
Um, I also want to point out that this pop-up window is fully customizable. So including the um, number of companies that are suggested, um, also as well as the algorithm of how SmartForms determines which company's selections to suggest or to choose. All right, so then once you select the company that you're with, um, this, this is what you're going to get on the back end. All this information on the right-hand side, along with the manually um, entered information from the prospect. Um, so on the left is the optimized user-friendly form with just a handful of fields. And on the right is what SmartForms is appending alongside that manually entered information from the prospect. Um, I'll also point out that this is only a sampling of the data um, as there are over 120 data points that are available for appending, um, including installed technology or all of the corporate hier um, hierarchy information as well. So again, SmartForms, it's completely configurable so you can consume as much or as little of this information that's required for your specific um, uh, business needs. Um, one of the cool features of smart form structured data is that it provides company information for domestic offices and the global parent company as well. Uh, this can be extremely helpful when it comes to segmentation and identifying the possibility of a much larger opportunity that is available. Okay, so here is another visualization of how SmartForms ca uh, captures that um, all that necessary accurate data on the first form fill. Therefore, on subsequent forms, marketers can focus on using progressive profiling fields to capture more BANT information. Since on that first form, SmartForms already appended all of the firmographic and demographic data. So there's no, no need to ask any more questions along those lines. Um, SmartForms allows for a much more effective um, personalization for known leads, uh, therefore, you know, helping to shorten the length of the buyer's journey through the funnel and help closing the loop on lead to opportunity conversion, which is then going to directly improve the RRI for your marketing programs. So this slide, um, this shows some of the reasons that our customers are adopting smart forms. So as, as you can see, there are many benefits for having enriched marketing data. And this chart represents um, the top reasons why our customers are adopting. Uh, most of them are not just adopting for uh, one reason, but for multiple rather. Uh, as you can see, the top reasons include simplification of lead handoffs. Uh, so we hear this all the time. The ability to route leads to your sales team efficiently is huge. Um, power lead scoring and marketing automation, as well as enhanced targeting and segmentation as well. All right, so this is a case study that was provided to us um, by our, one of our customers, Marketo. In this slide, you can see this, the significant increase, um, excuse me, increase in conversions and the decrease in the cost per lead um, that they experienced by shortening their forms. So you can see over on the right, they originally had nine fields. Um, then in the middle, shorten it down to seven, and then on the left, down to five. And you can see that they experienced their highest conversion and lowest cost per lead while receiving even more data right than on the original form um, that had the nine fields by implementing smart forms. So that's a great example of how smart forms has really helped um, increase um, conversion and help lower the costs for one of our customers. Here are some more success metrics. Um, this is a case uh, case study with um, Hortonworks. It's actually a joint, so it's it's Hortonworks. They shared with us from our joint customer Marketo the experience, uh, the sex, the excuse me, the success that they experienced after implementing smart forms, and also implementing Marketo's personalization tool that I had mentioned earlier. So uh, Marketo's uh, real-time personalization in our smart form products enabled Hortonworks um, to really quickly scale their demand gen efforts. Um, 
Smart Forms helped by creating valuable data um, that they that they need about their site visitors um, by appending up to the 100 different data points, um, including address, industry, and revenue. And because of this data, their lead um, accuracy improved 43%. Um, you know, so salespeople were no longer having to go into the queue and figure out which leads belong to them. Um, when implementing smart forms, they were able to have this set up and routed um, efficiently. Um, and the real-time personalization is now delivering that relevant individualized content. So the combination of the data and targeting has matured their inbound strategy and enhanced their digital lead flow um, by leaps and bounds. So great metrics there. So I would say in summary, when it comes to the data that you're using to fuel your inbound personalization, your data should be complete and consistent, right? So as we mentioned, if your data is not complete and consistent and clean, it's going to be very difficult to see the results that you're hoping to achieve with your personalization initiatives. Um, so, you know, although it might take a little more time on the front end to set up these initiatives, it's going to pay for it in the long run. And Reach Forces Smart Forms captures that real-time verified data that helps marketers um, better segment and target qualified leads, allowing you to deliver that optimal mes messaging at the appropriate time to your customers um, and prospects as well. All right, so with that, we will jump on over to Q&A. Looks like we have around four or five minutes. Um, so I want to thank everyone so much for joining us today. Um, as I said, if we don't get to your question, I will definitely follow up with you after the webcast. And with that, I will start um, with our first question here. Give me just one second to pull it up. All right, so this is a great question. This is the one that we definitely hear often. Um, so will smart forms interfere with my existing landing page forms? So no, smart forms will not interfere. Um, it can be figured to work on any online lead form, including any of the major marketing automation platforms or CRMs as well. Thank you for submitting that question. That was a great question. All right, we will move on to our next question. So how does the flow work? So smart forms is just a, it's a lightweight piece of JavaScript that sits on the page form. So what you do is you create the hidden fields for the data points that um, your company desires, and then smart forms will populate the data and be along for the ride with the form just as it normally would. You just don't see any of that. It's all on the back end. So that's a great question. Thanks for submitting that. All right, let's see what our next one is. So what systems will it work with? So what systems will smart forms work with? So smart forms, um, it's platform agnostic. It will work with any platform. That's one of the great things about smart forms. It's um, completely configurable with any platform. All right, let's see. Do we get the data in real time? So yes, the, the data is appended to the inbound lead at the point of lead conception in your marketing automation platform or CRM. Again, however you have that set up within your organization. All right, let's see. It looks like we have one more question. Might give all of us an extra few minutes back on our calendar for the day. Uh, let's see, so do you provide global information? So yes, we have around 225 million records um, in our database and a very strong um, global data set. So thank you for submitting that. Thank you to everyone that submitted a question. I appreciate that. And after the webinar concludes, you will receive a survey. So if you could please take a minute to complete the survey to let us know what topics you would like to see covered in the future. And if you would possibly be interested in speaking on one of the bi-monthly smart forms webinars, 
I would appreciate that. So thank you again, everyone, for joining, and I hope you all will join me again next time. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye.